Example 7 says simplify each expression by factoring. Factoring is one of the things that we're going to be doing on virtually every single problem to make sure you factor and simplify. Um, factoring is absolutely necessary in this course and you need to be confident in your factoring skills if you want to succeed. So the first one is x cubed minus 2x. All you're looking for with factoring in this one is do they have anything in common? Both of these have an x in common, so I'm able to pull an x out. And then what I like to do to think about this is I think about what is x cubed divided by x? Or what is x cubed when I remove one x? Well, how many x's would be left over? There'd be an x squared left over. And then I think about what is negative 2x divided by x? Or what is negative 2x when you take the x away and there's the minus 2 left over? So the last thing we need to do, so this is, this is the one factored version of it, x times x squared minus 2. The last thing we want to do is make sure we can't factor any further. So what I'm looking at is this last piece, x squared minus 2. This is not a difference of squares, so this does not factor. For instance, if that was x squared minus 4, we would not be done with this problem. We would have to continue and factor further. So always make sure when you factor that you're factoring completely. So the final answer on this problem would be x times x squared minus 2. Let's go on to the next problem right here. You have a 2x to the 1 half plus 4x to the 5 halves. Again, what we've seen here is that um, when you have radicals, one of the things we want to do is work with them in exponential form. Well, if you're working with them in exponential form, one of the things you need to have confidence in is can you factor and simplify those terms. So again, in factoring, you're looking for anything they have in common. I'm going to look at the coefficients, the 2 and the 4. I notice both of those have a 2 in common. Now I'm going to look at the variables, an x to the 1 half and an x to the 5 half. They're both x's, so they definitely have an x in the common. The question is, how many can we pull out? Well, it's always the smaller of the two powers. 1 half is smaller than the 5 halves, so that's what we're able to pull out, is the x to the 1 half. So again, now I'm going to think about what is 2x to the 1 half divided by 2x to the 1 half. That would simply be 1. Plus, now I'm going to think about what is 4x to the 5 halves divided by 2x to the 5 halves. We can do that in a couple steps. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And I know I'm going to have an x left over. So what is x to the 5 halves divided by x to the 1 half? Well, that's division. And with division, again, you subtract the powers. So you're going to do x to the 5 halves minus 1 half. So in your calculator, do 5 halves minus 1 half. 5 halves minus 1 half is 4 halves, which is simply... 2. So what are we getting with this when we factor? We're getting 2x to the 1 half times 1 plus 2x squared. Um, we have to continue to look to see if there's anything else we can do here. The second term is a square. The 2 is not a square though and it's an addition so we know that doesn't factor any further. Please again review all of your factoring rules if you need practice with factoring. But this is factored form right here, 2x to the 1 half times 1 plus 2x squared. Again, in this problem, what's the point? Well, it said factor, but in throughout the semester, you're going to have problems where this is just one small, small part of the problem, and you need to factor to be able to simplify your final answer. So make sure you know how to factor and simplify. So let's look at this next one right here. It says simplify by factoring. I know this looks ugly. I know this looks ridiculous, but I am telling you, you are going to see this numerous times this semester. In fact, what this appears to be to me is something called the chain rule, which is, or sorry, product rule, which is one of the derivative techniques you're going to be learning later on this semester. So this is no joke. You will see this. You do need to know how to do this. So let's go ahead and figure this out. There's a couple of different strategies that we can use on this problem problem. We have x plus 2 to the 1 half times 3x minus 1 to the 3 halves plus 4 times x plus 2 to the negative 1 half times 3x minus 1 to the 5 halves. Okay, so one strategy would be dealing with this negative exponent right here. Dealing with a negative exponent means we could throw it into the denominator. If you want to do it that way, that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, you're just going to have to be very, very careful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at, look, both of these have an x plus 2 raised to something in common, and both of these have a 3x minus 1 raised to something in common. So I'm going to pull both of those out. And remember, when you pull something out, when you factor something out, you have to factor it 
with the lowest power of that term. So let me zoom out a little bit here so we can see what I'm doing. Again, I know that I have an x plus 2 in common, and I know I have a 3x minus 1 in common. Now I need to look at the powers and pick the lowest of those powers. So x plus 2 is to the 1 half, and x plus 2 is to the negative 1 half. Well, it looks to me like the lowest of those powers is negative 1 half, so that's what I'm going to be able to factor out. Let's look at the next one. We have 3x minus 1. This power was a 3 halves. The next power was a 5 halves. The lowest of those two powers is 3 halves. So that's what I'm going to be able to factor out. So now I need to find out what it would be simplified. So what is x plus 2 to the 1 half divided by x plus 2 to the negative 1 half? Again, since we're doing division, we have to subtract the powers. So here, if I did division, I would do 1 half minus negative one-half. Be very careful with your negative signs there. A one-half minus a negative one-half is actually a positive one. So this would be x plus two to the positive first power, or just x plus two. So now we move on to the three x minus one to the three-halves. So if we do a three x minus one to the three-halves, divided by three x minus one to the three-halves, that's quite simply one, so I'm not going to even put that term there. Plus, now let's look at this next term. We have a 4. There is no constant here, so that 4 has to remain. We have the x plus 2 to the negative 1 half divided by x plus 2 to the negative 1 half. That's just 1, so we'll leave that. Then we have the 3x minus 1 to the 5 halves divided by 3x minus 1 to the 3 halves. Again, division, subtract the powers. So in your calculator, do 5 halves minus 3 halves. 5 halves minus 3 halves is 1. Uh, it's 2 halves, which is 1. So this would be just simply 3x minus 1 left over. So what do we have so far? When we're factoring, we have an x plus 2 to the negative 1 half. We have a 3x minus 1 to the positive 3 halves. And then we still have x plus 2 plus 4 times 3x minus 1. This is not at all simplified, so I still have some work to do. For instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute that 4 through to these two terms. Do some side work here. This would be 4 times 3x is 12x minus 1. So 4 times negative 1 is a minus 4. So I'd have an x plus 2 plus a 12x minus 4. I'm going to combine like terms. x plus 12x would be 13x. And 2 minus 4 would be minus 2. So it seems to me like this entire thing right here, this entire inside turns into 13x minus 2. So let's clean it up. We have the x plus 2 to the negative 1 half. We have the 3x minus 1 to the positive 3 halves. And then we have that 13x minus 2. That's almost perfect form for us, but we've got one issue left. We have a negative 1 half. Negative 1 half, we can't have negative exponents in our final answer. So remember, with a negative exponent, you need to throw it into the denominator. And that is the only term we're throwing into the denominator, because that's the only term with a negative exponent. So we would have a 3x minus 1 to the 3 halves on top, a 13x minus 2 on top in the numerator, and then we'd have an x plus 2 to the negative, or sorry, to the positive 1 half, in the denominator, it's positive because we moved it to the denominator. So that would be my final simplified answer right there. Let's go ahead and look at the next question. Next question is example 9a. It says simplify the following expressions by factoring. So we have 5x cubed plus x to the 6 all over 3x. I'm going to teach you two different ways to do this problem um, because there are two different techniques on this. Um, the first technique is the one that I use most often. If you look, there is a single term in the denominator. And one of the tricks for simplifying in calculus when you have a single term in the denominator is rewrite it as two separate factions. So what am I talking about right here? For instance, if I had 2 plus 3 over 7, in fact, let me take a step back. If I was trying to add fractions, if you remember when you're adding fractions, you need that common denominator. So if you have 2 sevenths plus 3 sevenths, you are able to say that's 2 plus 3 over 7. When you add fractions, 
the denominators have to be the same. You add the numerators, and then the denominator stays the same. So that's how adding fractions works. Well, what I'm asking you to do, instead of going the direction you're used to going to, which is combining fractions, I'm actually going to ask you to go the opposite direction and separate the fractions. So if you look at this, it's 5x cubed plus x to the 6 all over 3x. What I'm asking you to do is go the blue arrow direction where you separate them. In other words, this would look like 5x cubed over 3x plus x to the 6th over 3x. Now I can simplify each one of those terms individually. 5 and the 3 don't simplify. The x cubed and the x would turn into an x squared and a 1 x to the 6 over x would turn into an x to the 5th, and that would turn into a 1. So we have 5x squared over 3 plus x to the 5th over 3, and that would be one of our potential ways of writing our final answer. You can only separate and simplify like this when you have a single term on the bottom. When I say a single term, what I'm talking about here is it's just 3x. If it were something like 3x plus 2, that is not the strategy that you want to use. Um, so for instance, on part B, you have multiple things on the bottom. You have x minus 1 cubed quantity squared. You are not going to separate and simplify that term. But this is not the only way to do this problem. There was another way to do this problem. The way of doing this problem the first way is by looking at just the top. So consider just the top, which is 5x cubed plus x to the 6. Let's consider factoring that. If we factor that, they have an x cubed in common. 5x cubed divided by x cubed is just a 5. And x to the 6 divided by x cubed is an x cubed. Remember, subtract your powers. So if I really wanted to look at this problem, I could look at it as x cubed times 5 plus x cubed. That's the numerator factored all over 3x. Now I could do my simplification. x cubed and an x would have an x squared on top and a 1 on bottom. And so I'd be left with the final answer of x squared times 5 plus x cubed all over 3. Okay, so what, what you notice is this is also a simplified answer. Um, it might not be easy to notice, but these two answers are exactly the same equivalent mathematically. Um, both of these answers I would accept on the test. Both of these strategies I would accept on the test. What's the difference? One of these is in factored form, and one of these is in separated and simplified form. Technically, it did say factor on the problem, so technically we probably should do this right one, but again, I would accept both of these on the test. And if you went ahead and distributed this, x squared times 5 is 5x squared. x squared times x cubed is x to the fifth. Has the denominator of 3. You can see that both of these answers, when you separate it and distribute, are mathematically equivalent. Let's move on to 9b. This is an example. Uh, for those of you who have seen calculus before, this is going to be something called the quotient rule. Um, it also has a chain rule in there. But what's the moral of the story? You are going to see it, algebra exactly like this in this class. You cannot be overwhelmed by the simple number of expressions in, that you have to simplify. Okay, so whenever you see something like this, which again, you absolutely will see in this class numerous times, you cannot panic. You have to slowly work through it one step at a time. So what am I looking for here? Well, here on the bottom, I see x minus 1 cubed squared. I know when I raise a power to a power that I multiply those. So let's think about multiplying those. 3 times 2, I'm going to have x minus 1 raised to the 6th power in the denominator. What can I do in the numerator? Well, factoring is your friend in cases like this. Look for anything they have in common. For instance, I see they most definitely have a 3 in common. I'll pull the 3 out. Sorry, I should have done that in black. I'll pull the 3 out. What's the next thing in common? I see an x plus 2 squared and an x plus 2 cubed. So I'm able to pull out the smaller of the two powers, the x plus 2 squared. I also see an x minus 1 cubed and an x minus 1 squared. Again, I can pull out the smallest of the powers, so that would be the x minus 1 squared. All I'm doing is factoring this numerator. So let's think about this. Look at this first term right here. The 3 times x plus 2 squared times x minus 1 cubed. I pulled out the 3, so that's gone. I pulled out the x plus 2 squared, so that's gone. I had an x minus 1 cubed, and I pulled out an x minus 1 squared, so I still have an x minus 1 left over 
from this first group of expressions right here. Now let's take a look at the next one. It's a negative sign, so I'm going to go ahead and put that negative there. Pulled out the 3, that's gone. x plus 2 cubed, I pulled out x plus 2 squared, so there would still be an x plus 2 left over. x minus 1 squared, I pulled out the x minus 1 squared, so that's gone. I don't need to worry about that. So that looks like the numerator factored. The numerator factored is 3 times x plus 2 squared times x minus 1 squared times the quantity x minus 1 minus the quantity x plus 2. One thing I want to extremely, extremely highlight here, very, very important. Do you see how I put those parentheses around the x plus 2 and that last part? One of the biggest mistakes in a calculus course is something called distributing the negative. When you have subtraction of multiple terms, you actually need to distribute that subtraction to both terms. So really what we have, I'm going to rewrite the whole thing here. No, I wouldn't expect you to necessarily rewrite the whole thing. But let me show you exactly what I mean by distributing the negative. So I have 3 times x plus 2 squared times x minus 1 squared. I'd have the x minus 1. Then distributing the negative, I'd have a minus x, and then I'd have a minus 2. Many, many students would do minus x plus 2, but it's actually a minus x minus 2 when you distribute that negative, and it makes all the difference in the world. So now I'm going to combine like terms, simplifying just this inside right here. I see an x minus x, and then I see a minus 1 minus 2. That entire inside is going to simplify to a negative 3. Now if I do a negative 3 times the 3 right here in the front, that would be a negative 9. So let's see if we could simplify this all together. I would have a negative 9 times x plus 2 squared times x minus 1 squared all over x minus 1 raised to the 6th power. Again, that entire inside of those brackets turned into a negative 3, and then I did the negative 3 times the coefficient out in front of 3, which gave me my negative 9. Okay, I am not done yet. I always need to check to see if there's anything more I can simplify. On top, I see an x minus 1 squared. On bottom, I see an x minus 1 to the 6. There would be 1 left on, just the number 1 left on top, and there would be an x minus 1 raised to the 4th power because uh, 6 minus 2 is 4 left in the bottom. So an x minus 1 to the 4th in the bottom. So I am left with negative 9 times x plus 2 squared all over x minus 1 to the 4th. Okay, that was a lot to bite off in that problem. I want you to review that problem and make sure you can do it. I am not joking. In a matter of one to two weeks, you are going to be doing this exact mathematics within a problem. So this is just a subpart of the problem. There's a lot more that you're going to do with it. So these problems in calculus can be very, very long. You need to make sure you know the algebra behind them.